top five antenna myths of 2021. I try to keep it simple. I'm trying to make it real. But in this case, there's a few topics. I just wanted to quickly run through. Um, listing five of those. So let's start with the list. The first one. Now, what's interesting is um, these, these, this is a topic that I discussed last year. And it, it actually is the worst performing video from last year. Not in terms of nobody watches it. It's just actually because I got the most dislikes. Now, I don't know if this is because people think it's, a, it's dumb to talk about this, but I still get the question a lot, and I do understand where people are coming from with this question. Um, if you are in the know, and this is a type of topic that you don't think is relevant, it is relevant for a lot of people that are not technical. It's the same like me going to the doctor. I can go to Google. I could see what's going on with what I think if I have a problem. Or I could go to the doctor who is a specialist and may have a better idea what I actually need to know. So um, the same here that um, I think it's definitely, it's a valid question. And the answer is no, you don't need an external antenna. Uh, don't need an external power supply for your external antenna. And it gets interesting because that's no longer true. If you look at the uh, new product that Pointing has released, which is a, a E-Point, this thing actually will house the antenna and the router, the modem, whatever you have, can be placed right next to it as well. Then this whole combination will go onto the old, um, your pole. Now that's a whole topic that I will cover over the um, coming, coming few months because this is actually a really sensible solution, technically speaking. Um, so there's, there's a lot of good reasons why you want to do that. But the thing is for those, you will have to have power going up to your antenna because your antenna is up there. The fact that your router is also there, that gets the power. So it gets very muddy. And, and when people are not technical, that's where trying to explain, yeah, it's an antenna, but there's also a modem with it. It gets very, you know, it's, it's just, there's, there's a fine line in between what is obvious and what is actually getting quite technical. And I think that's getting to the point where you say, well, that's crossing the border to becoming a bit too technical for majority of users. That's why for an antenna only, when your router is on the inside, don't worry about power, it's all good. And when you actually have a complicated solution that someone says, this is better, there's probably going to be power up there. And that's what we'll cover in the next 12 months, because that is an awesome thing to do. Right. Did I say that was number one? That was number five. Number four, using a splitter to create MIMO. Again, this is a, um, a video that I did last year. Uh, got good results. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't negatively received, but it's still an ongoing question. And I think this is going to be probably a question again in 2022 and going forward as well. As we get more MIMO systems, MIMO is at the moment two by two. So there's two antennas, which is easy. Two, it's an easy conversation, but with 5G and, and more um, high demanding technologies, four by four and beyond is, is happening more and more. Um, you can't use a splitter to create MIMO. You create a single port into two. It's not MIMO. So that's basically the, um, the essence of that. I did discuss that in the video in last year. Um, it's going to be an ongoing conversation. Now on the slide that I have there, there's obviously a proper splitter, which is properly done, already is a better option to use if something like this ever becomes relevant. Um, then the other picture that I have there is also taken from that video I did before, which is basically taking two cables and just cramming that into a single connector. It's a bad design. It's going to give you more problems than just breaking your MIMO. So don't even go there. That's, that's a totally not recommended solution. Number three, reusing old coax for 4G or 5G. Now, I guess when I wrote this actual slide, well, I was specifically thinking, I get a lot of times the question that there's RG6 or old satellite or old TV cable already um, routed in the house. So people want to know, can I use that cable for my 4G connection? So in that specific topic, absolutely not a good idea because it's a different type of cable. You need 50 ohm for Wi-Fi, for 4G, for um, 5G. Um, TV systems, satellite systems, TV satellite systems work in 75 ohm. So it's a different type of thing. So you're actually going to introduce many more issues, losses and performance issues if you use that. So, and it's normally only one cable anyway. So you can't have a MIMO system. So there's a, a lot of not good ideas. Now the photo that I use on the slide is also coming to the point where if it's old connectors, old cable, even if it's the correct type of cable, you need to be very careful. Unless you know exactly how the cable was used and where it was used, that's also flawed with risk. There could be corrosion on the connectors, there could be corrosion in the cables if there's any moisture or dampness that might have happened over the course of the lifespan of the cable. Also, 
it could be just pumped. So a cable needs to be nicely coaxial, hence the word. If there's a ding, if a nick, if somebody bent it too tightly once, it's just going to have some issues at some places. So unless you know really how the cable was used and operated and it's perfectly placed and never was touched and, and, and through some unknown um, experience, probably just got big, better to go for decent cable and, and decent quality connectors such as Jabo, which we sell. So, um, I mean, it's just, just slipping that in there, it's, it's decent connected. Number two, oh, of course, this is one that actually wasn't 2021, it was 2020 as well, more so 2020. Um, and I have to put that in there. Fortunately, I wasn't confronted too many times with that here in Australia, in the SSRF shop. Um, the topic is really, does 5G cause COVID? Or did 5G and COVID have anything to do with each other? <sighs> do I say anything? I guess being RF shop, being an antenna company, being a 5G, 4G company, it's no, no secret where I stand on this topic. I mean, we, we, I'm totally passionate about the technology and I'm totally frustrated like probably 100% um, of the world at, 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 in COVID. But the two are totally different fields. And I almost feel by going into the conversation about one science and the other science and trying to say why they don't mix and why it's not related at all, I already give too much credit to the, um, the people that, that think like this. So my final answer is just, nah, N obviously not. Don't, don't call us up, don't ask me what I think about this. The answer is simple, no. This is just totally different, unrelated, not, not, don't even go there. This is just not happening. It's not, <laughs> it's not, boom. And the last one, um, number one, any old aerial will be just fine. Now this was also a video that was, um, not well received always. I had some um, you know, dislikes, people just thinking, oh, this is, why do I even bother? Some people saying, man, it's time somebody talks out about this. If you go on, U on um, YouTube, sorry, YouTube is awesome, by the way. If you go on eBay um, and you find a 4G antenna, you buy just the, 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 the first and the best 4G antenna you can find, you get ridiculous numbers and it's, a, it's phenomenally cheap and it is numbers that are phenomenally high in terms of performance. It is too good to be true, doesn't it? So you need to really go for quality and then, well, not premium necessarily, but, but you need to look out for quality and, and um, reputable brands. And probably if you look over my left shoulder here, um, that's a clue on where my head is at as well with um, pointing antennas, that they're definitely part of that, that category where you buy into a brand that has reputation and proven results. And um, there's a lot of lot of examples out there where it works just phenomenally well. Um, of course, the photo that I use there is I use it on a lot of lectures as well. It's just, just a lot of people would for car radio, FM radio, they just bend a little map out. It's just showing. It can be done, but it means you're in a good signal. So the signal is so good that with even with that bad type of antenna, you still get good enough signal. But that type of antenna there would just fail if you go into the rural areas where a proper antenna would stop working. And the same logic works as well, the same way with um, 4G and 5G antennas that, that you probably could get away with a, a pretty bad antenna in the city. You might think that it works well, but once you go to places where the antenna is actually engaged and needed, that's where the thing will just fall, totally fall over and it can't work. The other thing as well is with um, the bad designs that with 5G coming in, did I mention I love 5G? I do. Um, complexity demands quality. So we're now at two by two, which is just a little bit of technicalities there. It's going to get more complex. As we, we get more demanding on our data speeds and stuff, it's just going to get worse. Worse or better, whichever way you want to see it. The requirement on the detail of the antenna is going to get more and more important. If you have a bad antenna, the problems that you're going to have is just going to get worse and worse. So the difference between there's a bad antenna, there's a good antenna, I get the same results in the city when I'm right next to the base station. Sure, you move away, you go into um, the suburbs, I still get a good signal. My performance is not quite what it is, but it's still quite acceptable. Then you go out into the remote areas. This is what I need for my antenna. That is what I'm going to get from the tune. You can see it's worlds apart. So that's what's going to happen more and more and that difference between the experience of a good and bad antenna is just going to get um, worse quicker and you're going to get um, bad experiences even where you currently think you can get away with bad antenna. So my advice, just don't go there. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Um, looking forward for the next five 
topics that I could discuss in the um, coming 12 months. I'll see how this goes, if it, if it, if it draws any attention, and um, we'll keep working on, on the video material and what we can do on, on all our stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Cheers, bye-bye.